Now what we have here is one of the new Night Sight Viper units which is basically a digital scope mounted infrared night vision add-on which you can fit to your normal day scope in a couple of minutes transforming it into a night vision sight. Now the Viper is designed for an identification range of 100 meters but there are two other more powerful units in the lineup the Wolf with an identification range of up to 300 meters and the Eagle with an identification range of up to 500 meters. Now if the identification ranges of the Wolf and the Eagle are anything to go by these newer units totally outperform the older NS50 and NS200 that Night Sight started out with a few years ago. Now although the units do seem fairly similar in design You'll soon see when I compare my older NS200 against the new Viper that there are quite a few subtle changes, some of them incorporated to make the unit more easy to use in the field. As with the earlier units, the Viper comes in a nice foam lined hard plastic box. Now it doesn't put any more bunnies in the bag, but it's nice to have it to store the unit in when in transit or not in use. But let's have a look inside, that's what really matters. First out of the box is the guarantee card, which you fill in and post back to Night Sight. Next out of the box is a packet of the anti-glare filters to help reduce screen glare. Now originally these had to be purchased as an accessory from Night Sight, so it's nice to see that there's a packet of them already incorporated in with the Viper. Next up is the instruction manual. It's quite well presented with plenty of nice illustrations and diagrams inside. Uh, it's fairly easy to follow. Ok, it's never going to be a best selling novel and you're not going to sit down for a riveted read. But it's still worthwhile going through it to make sure you have the whole unit set up properly. Ok, let's have a look at the good stuff. First up is the LCD screen and illuminator module. That's a mouthful. It's fairly similar looking to the older units. Next we have the camera module, which again is fairly similar, except for that little button in the bottom corner. That's new. These are the two scope sleeves, which are basically two pieces of rubber tubing, which is designed to fit the camera onto your scope's eye bell. One is a slightly different size from the other to allow for different sizes of scopes. Then we have the uh, two scope clamps. One of them is for a 25mm scope and the other is for a 30mm scope. And you can see the little anti-recoil clamp is already supplied in the box. Again this was something you had to uh, buy as an accessory with the older units. So it's nice to see this was already incorporated in the box. This is basically the battery charger off the main supply. And then here we have the battery, which must be one of the smallest batteries I've ever seen Night Sight produce. It has a funny looking Velcro strap on it. This is to allow it to fit onto the scope. One thing I did notice when I was hoping through the box was this little device and I had to look through the instruction manual to find what it was. It's a little ferrite insulator which you can add to help stop any radio interference. So let's take a minute and compare the older NS200 against the new Viper unit. As you can see from the front there isn't a big deal of difference between the two LCD screens. But if you turn the two units to their side you can see that the new Viper unit is much longer tapering down into a much more narrower end where the IR illuminator is built in. Another difference in the two units are the IR adjuster knobs. In the older NS200 the knob had a rather noisy 5 click stop adjustment from off all the way to maximum, while the newer Viper unit has a seamless and totally silent knob. Also my quite 
early model NS200 attached to the camera module with a 2.5mm jack plug compared to the Viper which uses a 3.5mm jack plug with a 90 degree angle. Now the 2.5 always felt quite loose hence the elastic band but the 3.5mm of the Viper uh, fits much more firmly. Both camera units are more or less exactly the same size and shape. What's new on the Viper unit is a brand new almost silent on off button. No more reaching forward to turn the unit on with the IR adjustment knob then clicking up through all five settings to get the maximum power. With the button you can set the IR to whatever power you want and just switch the unit on and off with the button. Another difference in the Viper compared to my early model NS200 is that the cameras have been inverted. Therefore there should be far more room in under the scope to operate a bolt action rim fire or center fire. The cameras in the two units do seem to be more or less the same size. Though the Viper unit does have a nice black and white textured grippy surface on the adjustment knob which really does come in handy when you're trying to focus the crosshairs in for the scope you're using. The only real difference I see in the scope sleeves for fitting the camera module onto the rifle scope is that one of the sleeves for the Viper unit has a much narrower tapered down end to it making it much more flexible so I suspect it's there to aid fitting the camera module to a scope with an awkward shaped eye bell to it. Now for one of the best changes and something night sight maybe got a bit of stick about at the start the battery. Remember this big thing? It was the 12 volt lead acid battery that came with the NS50 and 200. It was about the size of a house brick and weighed about the same but it lasted for quite a while and done the job rightly. Then after a while night sight upgraded to this an 11.1 volt 4800 milliamp hour lithium ion battery that weighed a lot less and could be fitted to the gun with a stock mounted pouch but again you had to buy it as an accessory and this stinky little thing this is the battery that comes as standard with the Viper it's an 11.1 volt 1500 milliamp hour battery that lasts for 5 hours in full power and is an absolute featherweight compared to the big lead acid battery it's so light it's actually designed to be strapped to the scope's eye bell. As you can see from the instruction manual there's quite a few accessories you can get. Now the anti-glare filters and the anti-recoil mount already come as standard with the Viper which is brilliant but one thing that doesn't come as standard that I'm sure other YouTubers as well as myself would be interested in is the AV connecting kit as this will enable you to record footage from the night site to another recording device and there's a page in the instruction manual on how to do this. Now I usually use a Lawmate PV500 to record the footage through a rather cheap and simple lead I got off eBay but Nightsight provided me with the AV connecting kit to try it out. As I said I should get better footage from it so we'll see. Now this can be used in conjunction with the AV in cable for the Lawmate PV500 and not the AV out cable I just set in the table which I found out later. So how does this all fit onto the rifle I hear you say? Well it fits on in exactly the same manner as the earlier NS50 and NS200 did before it. First you select whether you need the 25 or the 30mm scope clamp. Then you take the bolt out of the centre of it and clamp it round the scope tube. Then replace the bolt, but don't tighten it down. Take the LCD monitor and slide it into the scope clamp. Then tighten it down till the LCD monitor stops moving around. Now it is plastic, so don't take a pair of pliers to it or a monkey wrench. Finger tight is tight enough. Then you select which of the two rubber sleeves fits your scope's eye bell best and push it into place. Then take the camera module and push it onto the end of it. Then using the velcro strap provided attach the battery to the rubber sleeve on the scope's eye bell. Once that's done plug the power cable into the camera module. Then I usually wrap the lead for the LCD monitor around the scope a time or two to help take up the slack before plugging it also into the camera. 
press a button and there you go. Adjust the camera to the crosshairs are dead centre and then you can adjust the power for the IR up and down using the little knob on top of the LCD monitor. So for my range test I decided to set up a nice paper target of a rat as that's the sort of thing the Viper is designed for and a few rather rusty shotgun cartridges of different colours to see how the colours will contrast through the night sight. So I got myself set up in the garage at my usual range of about 30 yards which is a good range for airgun hunting. I'm using my Sandwell Field Sports Custom BSA Super 10 Mark II which I've had for years and was recently serviced by John Bowkit. I'm recording to my Lawmate PV500 using the Night Sight Connection Kit. Now to be honest I haven't seen a big lot of difference in the quality of the picture between the Night Sight Connecting Kit and the simple cheap lead I bought off of eBay. The one big plus is I'm able to record sound using the night sight connection kit well I never was able to do that with the eBay lead. Notice something missing? Yep, no rat. For some reason the ink mustn't show up in the IR. You learn something new every day. But I started shooting anyway and as you can see it didn't quite go to plan with cartridges flying everywhere. But I seem to be able to hit what I'm aiming at and the picture seems to be quite good. It is a wee bit unusual aiming when you're not actually looking through the scope and looking above the scope at the monitor. Now the sound you're listening to is being recorded through my Canon camcorder and not the night sight. So I decided to set the cartridges up for another go and let you listen to the recording of the sound through the night sight itself. Once the yard light went out of course. So here we go, round two. And you can see I've spaced the shotgun cartridges out a little so they hopefully won't knock each other rotten. That's if I can hit them that is. Oh, that's the first one down. Pretty sure I hit that one. But that's another complete miss. Now we're talking hey. You can hear that the sound recording is a lot boxier than that from the Canon camcorder but being able to record sound from the night sight is a big plus for me but I'm going to have to say about shortening those cables down. So to finish the night off I decided to give the field behind my house a wee scan. Now this is a clay wall silo at about 20 yards and you can see that the tires, dead grass and the fence stand out quite well. Once you get to the end post it's about 29 yards and I have to change the parallax and the scope but it comes into a nice crisp picture. So I decided to scan along the bottom of the field. This electrical pole is about 95 yards. The hedgerow behind it is just about visible but there's not a lot of detail in it. Even the fence posts here and the gap in the hedge are just about visible and no more. And another electrical pole at 135 yards. Now there was a few sheep feeding in the field at about 60 to 70 yards away. And it's not too bad a picture even though I tried to adjust it with a side focus. For a unit that's really only designed for identification at a maximum of 100 metres, that's not too bad. I adjusted the IR up and down from maximum to minimum. But if you really want a lot more light, you can try using an external IR illuminator. Like here, I'm using the Nightmaster 800 IR and it really does add a lot more light to the subject. Here the, the electric pole at 135 yards. The hedgerow itself is a lot more visible and more detail. The gap in the hedge and the trees even in the distance at 258 yards. Now with any digital add-on device, the quality of image you'll get drastically depends on the type of scope you're using as different scopes will react to the IR light in different ways. Even the recorded image you're watching here is nowhere near as good as what you'll actually see in the LCD screen. But I was able to pick out a set of eyes about 218 yards away. Probably not a fox but maybe a rabbit or a hare. So my closing thoughts on the Viper. It does seem to be a well made and well presented product 
and with the addition of that silent IR adjuster knob and the little on off switch in the camera module show that Nightsight have been listening to their customer feedback. Plus that little battery is absolutely brilliant. It makes the whole thing feel much more lighter and portable with no trailing wires to snag and stuff. Ok, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea as there's plenty of people who prefer to look through the scope instead of above it at the LCD screen. But there are plenty of other products on the market that you could look at. Or you could try building your own DIY unit. But if like me you either haven't got the time or the smarts to build your own and you'd rather have a ready made product in a box that you can simply fit to your rifle in a few minutes and go hunting with then the Viper is well worth looking at.